Hi guys, welcome to day 38 of our Lent 101 series. Today's topic is the journey of Christ. So, we're going to run through the events that took place, starting from the Passover meal right through to when Jesus was arrested. So, um, some of you might know that we are in Passion Week, and this is the day before Good Friday, day 38, is the day before Good Friday. So, we're going to be cover- or focusing on Christ's journey before, God, uh, before Good Friday, sorry. Um, and it's broken up into 10 key elements of the journey. So, I'm going to run through that with you now. So, the first part is... Peter and John prepare for the Passover and we can find that in Matthew 26 verse 17 to 19 and it reads now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him what wilt thou we prepare for thee to eat the Passover and he said go into the city to such a man and say unto him the master saith my time is at hand I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them and they made ready the Passover. So essentially the disciples are asking Jesus, well, what should we do? They're trying to prepare for the Passover feast. Um, And Jesus tells them to go and find a man and they they follow his instructions. So that's what that first part is about. It's just about preparing for the Passover meal. And then we actually have the Passover supper and we can find that in... Mark 14, 16 to 17, and that says, And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. So just like in the previous um, verse I read, they've followed Jesus' instructions, they've found the man, they've, they know what they've got to do, they're preparing for this final feast, um, and then they actually dine with Jesus and they have that, that Passover meal. The third uh, event in this journey is Paschal Supper, Supper, sorry, and that's in Luke 22, verses 7 to 38. It's a bit long, so I encourage you to take the time to read that after, after you've watched this. But that's basically relating to Easter and Passover, and it's, it's basically an, extent, an extension of um, the previous point we made about the uh, disciples and Jesus eating uh, the Passover dinner. So this causeway vine comforter, that's the caption for the next part of Jesus Christ's journey. And the Bible portion I'm going to read is John 14, verse 15 to 16. And it says, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So this is, these are instructions that um, we are given from Christ. And I think at this point, Obviously, we know it's Good Friday tomorrow. Something really, really big is about to happen. And that is Christ is going to die. He's going to be the sacrificial lamb so that we could live and we can have everlasting life. So there's, I I can just imagine that there's tension building. Everything's going on. You've got dinner. You've going to here. You're going to there to, to sort everything out. And I believe at this time, Jesus is just giving us some final commandments, some final things to live by. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, which is pretty self-explanatory. So if you love me, abide by my word. We're on day 38, so you would have seen a range of topics. We've covered blasphemy, adultery, fornication, idols, um, loads, and all of that sort of covers what I believe he's talking about. If you love me, you keep my commandments. Um, And then he says that his father will give us a comforter, and that's referring to the Holy Spirit. So when uh, Christ goes back to heaven, um, we, we're not going to be alone, we're going to be given the Holy Spirit who's going to act as a guide and a comforter so that we can live according to the will of God and he can guide us in, in, what, in um, being able to carry out what we've been asked to do. So then you've got a prayer for Jesus and this is really significant, it's really, it's a whole, so it's John Seven, you can find it in John 17, and again, it's a whole chapter, so I'm not going to read it now, but I encourage you to refer to it once you have um, 
once you've watched this sermon. But read the full ch chapter and it's a prayer between Jesus and God. And I think for me, it really highlights the significance of what is about to happen. Um, the fact that he's praying out to God and he talks about a lot of different things. But one significant thing is that he talks about having finished the work. But I really encourage you to, to go and read that. So we move on to Peter's boldness, which is Matthew 26, verse 33 to 35. And it says, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, ye, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me twice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Quite significant that it's called Peter's boldness, right? Um, just the boldness and the confidence in being able to say, oh Lord, I would, I would never deny you. I'm, I'm not even going to do it. And it's a little bit, not funny, but ironic because you can really like laugh at it almost. Like Jesus Christ, who knows all things, who knows how this whole thing is going to go down. You're so convinced that you're telling him that you're not going to deny him and it's just not possible. Um, and it's a little bit painful at the same time because, you know, this is someone who is who is Jesus's companion. You know, they've journeyed all of the disciples. They've journeyed um, with Jesus. They've from the time they chose to follow him up until now, they knew what was coming. And then we reach this crucial moment where uh, Jesus warns, warns that um, Peter's going to deny him. And then. Gethsemane, which is John 18, 1, and it says, When Jesus has spoke, had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. So Gethsemane is a garden. They've obviously gone to pray and they've gone to prepare for what is to come. And then we have agony, which is Matthew. Again, you can read this in your own time because this one is a little bit long, but it's Matthew 26, verse 36 to 46. And that just speaks of the agony that is to come and the agony in, well, the joy, but also the agony in, in Jesus's sacrifice. So similarly to what I said earlier about um, Peter's boldness, it kind of links onto this next part on the journey, which has been titled Betrayal. And we can read Matthew 26, verse 47 to 50. And it says, And while he yet spoke, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forth while he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Such a portrayal. It's like reading that, I almost feel like I'm watching a movie. Like I could just imagine how it went down. Um, I don't even know where to begin with this. We all know that Judas betrayed Jesus. But it's just the fact that, and I know that, Jesus dies for a purpose. We all like we re we knew that it was coming. Um, it was for a higher purpose, God, it, to fulfill God's will. But it's just it's really difficult to read that betrayal from from Judas that you would spend so much time in Christ's company only to sell him out for money. Um, and I think what's worse is that he actually went and he kissed him. Obviously, it was a sign um, to show the police people that this is the man that you want. But I think there's so much there. There's so much to unpack there with just a single kiss and the fact that he's going to betray Jesus and he still says, Master, and he goes to kiss him. And then Jesus says, Friend, wherefore art thou come? And it's like, despite Jesus being all-knowing and knowing how it's all going to go down, he still refers to him as a friend. And I think that is so beautiful and so telling of his character. And finally, we move to the arrest, which is pretty self-explanatory, but you can find it in Matthew 26, verse 57 to 59. And it reads, And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caphaeus, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. 
But Peter followed him afar off onto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. So obviously we know that despite um, Christ dying being God's will, there was a whole series of events that led up to it. So obviously people didn't like Jesus. They wanted him to die because they didn't like the fact that he could do miracles and so many people were, were following after him. Um, so that those verses just basically cover um, Jesus' arrest. So, you know, they're, they're about, they've arrested him now and they're, they're going to take him to his death. So I'm going to stop there. Um, and I hope that you're going to be waiting with bated breath for tomorrow where you can hear the rest of this wonderful story about how Jesus made this ultimate sacrifice. He paid the ultimate death so that we could live um, and we could live a life that gives us access to eternal life with our loving Father. So as I conclude, I just pray that you would be encouraged and you would remember the work that was done on the cross and you would remember that there is salvation and there is grace and there are all of these things that have been made available to us because of because of this because of this journey that Christ had to go on he paid the ultimate sacrifice and as we draw our Lenten journey to a close we're going to be looking at Good Friday tomorrow and going on a, a couple more days but as we draw our Lenten journey to a close I just hope and pray that it has been a really great time for you to reflect um, on, on your walk and the things that you want to change. So be encouraged. Um, stay tuned for the, the final few missing pieces for this ever so great story. And um, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in to day 38 of our Lent 101 series. Be sure to follow all of our social media platforms at Morningstar London, where we'll be uploading daily content to assist you on your Lenten journey. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>